Hey, today we're going to talk about putting a band together. That sounds kind of cool, doesn't it? Well, I thought it did. Let's jump right into it. Roll that intro. Hey YouTube, Bruce here again for Blackboard Rules. You know what? Whether you're a hobbyist or an aspiring professional musician, odds are if you want to pursue those things, you're going to probably either want to join or form your own band. You may be someone that's been offered a gig and now you have to search out musicians. Or you may be someone who's an original songwriter and so you want to find those musicians who can actually fulfill that. If you're a young person in school, you could always check out the music program there. Talk to the music teacher in charge and see if he can give you some leads on people that might be interested in joining up with you. If you're out of school or an older person, there is a ton of different ways to find other musicians. The first way I would say right away, and I harp on this a lot in my other videos, is go online. You know, there's websites like Bandmix, even Kijiji or Craigslist that have many musicians who are either looking for other bands or bands who are looking for musicians. You can also go to your local music store and oftentimes they'll have a bulletin board up and uh, there will be musicians advertising on the bulletin board. You can also ask the staff there. More often than not, the staff at the music store are musicians themselves and oftentimes they're looking for bands or other musicians to get together with. Also, if you live in a decent sized city, you can check out the local clubs and venues. They will usually schedule jam sessions or open mics during the week. Usually musicians flock to those things. It's a great place to network and even try out new material. Before we move on, I just want to give you one very good piece of advice. And this comes from my experience as a musician for many years. And that is, the players that you start out with in your band may not be the ones that you actually finish with. Oftentimes, bands will go through several changes of personnel before you actually get kind of the right mix. But in the end, you're going to have the players that really want to be there and really want to commit and contribute to your project. Okay, so you've put an ad online and now you're getting some responses back. Great! The next thing you should do is call each one of those people that's responded to your ad and get some information over the phone with them about what their goals are, what kind of instrument they play, how long have they been playing, it's important to spend time on the phone like this before you actually bring someone out to an audition because nobody, and I mean nobody, wants their time wasted. First of all, I'll give the prospective musician a list of five, maybe six songs that they can spend a few days with and learn and then bring to the audition and then we can see how it goes from there. Usually how I do this is I send over some YouTube links of the songs or sometimes I'll just email out some MP3s to them. Once the prospective musician arrives at the audition, the first thing I try and do is make them feel comfortable, make them feel at home. I've been in their boots many, many times and I know you can feel nervous and it can be quite a daunting task to meet new people and play in front of people who are actually going to be looking and listening very closely to what you're doing. Make sure you audition a few musicians for the position. Through the process, you're going to see people who you think are not going to fit in with you guys, or you'll meet people that you think are going to fit in. Even if you find someone right away who fits in, make sure that if you have more musicians to audition, audition them as well. That way you always have an option and you may always find someone who's better. After the auditions are over, go through your mental notes and figure out who you would like to put in that position. All the aspects that you liked about people and all the aspects that you didn't like about people. What the skill levels were. 
how they interacted with the rest of the band. Make sure you take a day or two to make your decision, but don't wait too long because you don't want to keep people on the line. Let the successful candidate know. As a courtesy, phone the people that didn't make it. Let them know that you've picked somebody else, but thank them for their time. Also, make sure that you keep everybody's contact information because you never know the guy that you've picked may or may not drop out two weeks later and you may need to phone one of these other folks that didn't make the first cut. Alright, so now you've got your group of guys together. The first thing you probably want to do is decide what kind of a band you want to be. Do you want to be just a bunch of guys that get together once a week in your basement and kind of jam things out and have fun that way? Or do you want to play live gigs? Or would you like to go on the road? Or perhaps you'd like to take some of your original material, flesh it out, go in the studio and record an album. It's up to you. But once you figure out what you want to do, then you can take some positive steps towards achieving those goals. Next is your level of commitment. Are you a bunch of weekend warriors who have regular day jobs during the week and practice in the evening and you do gigs on the weekend? Or is your goal to be totally professional? You're actually working toward doing music full time. If you're looking at doing this as a full time professional, you're going to have to plan to set a lot of time aside to do all the things that a professional musician does. Network, practice your instrument on your own, practice with a band, write material, market yourselves, the list goes on and on and on. I remember a conversation I once had with an older, more experienced musician. And the day I told him that I wanted to go full-time and become a full-time professional musician, he looked at me, he smiled and he said, congratulations, you've picked probably one of the most difficult professions ever. You may also have to figure out the structure of your band. Is there one particular person who's kind of the leader of your band? Or do you share everything equally? Or do you do a bit of both? Is there one guy that kind of takes the lead on everything, but he designates the other players to do individual tasks? It's an important thing to figure out, because otherwise you could create conflict within the band. Once you start spending a lot of time with each other, um, you're going to see different personality traits come out. Different strengths and different weaknesses of each band member. Sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's not so good. Sometimes that can cause conflict or even fights. But you know what? Bands are like families. And if you can work through those conflicts, then you can be very successful in what you do. Another thing that goes along with commitment is actually investment of money. A lot of the bands that I've been in, the original bands, usually what we've done, besides buying our own equipment for ourselves, is we've pooled our money together so we can buy equipment for the band. For example, PA, or lights, or merchandise that can be sold at the gigs. Uh, sometimes what will happen is one guy will own the PA, one guy will own the lighting system, another guy will own something else. That can work out good if your band ever happens to break up and then you can go your separate ways and take what you actually own. One thing I'm going to briefly touch on because I'm actually saving it for another video and that is the subject of songwriting and recording those songs. Is one player in your band writing all the material? Or is the band as a whole contributing to that material? That's something that's extremely important for you to figure out. And you actually might need to get some legal advice to do that. Once you get into the whole area of royalties, etc., it can get a little bit complex. And that's where you can run into a lot of conflict. Hand in hand with that is when you go into the studio to record. Who's paying for that? Is the band as a whole paying for that recording session? Or is it just the person that's written the songs? You need to figure that out before you get in there and you get tired 
after playing for eight hours and you start fighting. Well, thanks for watching the video and I hope you got something out of it. You know, putting a band together can be a real process. And like I said before, you may go through several people before you actually get that perfect group that you want. If you like the video, be sure and give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below because we have new videos coming out every Friday to help to make you a better musician and a better artist. Once again, I'm Bruce for Blackboard Rules and we'll see you in the next video. Hey, a rule that outro!